Hey y'all, what's up? My name is Avery and these are all of the books that I want to read in February. I can't believe it's already February. It feels like 2021 just started. Oh my gosh. So I have so many books on this list. Like it is ridiculous. <laughs> I'm definitely probably not going to read all of these, but my TBRs are very different than other people's so are the, these are all the books that are on my radar in the month. I don't have to read all of them. If I don't know what to read, I look towards this list and it's okay if I don't read all of them. First, what we are going to do is pick from my TBR jar. I have a video coming up very soon filled with all of my 2021 20, bookish goals. It's probably going to be the next video that you see probably. Um, and I talk about in there how I want to make a goal for myself to pick a book from this jar once a month and do a dedicated reading vlog for it. I didn't do it for January because I didn't have that goal until midway through January. Um, so this is the first time we're going to do it. So we're going to just pick one book out of here and I have to read it. Well, hopefully I read it <laughs> and I have to do a dedicated reading vlog for it. So let's pick this one okay I'm so nervous okay whoa okay okay we have the bad you can't even see that probably the bad beginning by lemony snicket so this is a book that's been on my tbr for a very long time this book the bad beginning by lemony snicket the first book in a series of unfortunate events i didn't read this series growing up like at all and so i've never read them but i really love the netflix tv show like i do and so i really wanted to read these books and i only own the first one i got at half price books one day and i've been dying to read it it's like been at the top of my tbr cart my high priority i am actually really excited about this it's very short and i feel like a bunch of people have read this book to where like they'd actually watch a dedicated reading vlog for that one so i'm very excited for this all i know it is about three orphan children and this is about count olaf i believe their uncle possibly i don't remember and um these orphans their parents just died and each book is about them getting a new guardian because something happens to the gu guardian from the first book and so count olaf throughout this whole series is trying to get the kid's fortune that comes with the kids once Violet or I think her name's Violet, Violet the oldest comes of age. I'm very excited for this. So we have two readathons that I'm participating in in the month of February. The first one is the Black Author Readathon. Both of these readathons span the whole entire month of February and so what I'm going to be doing for reading vlogs for these because I'm going to do a reading vlog for each of these readathons is I'm going to be doing a dead uh um, every time I read a book that is on my TBR I'm going to put that in the vlog i'm not gonna vlog my whole month for both of them i'm just whenever i fit, read a book from that tbr list for that specific readathon i'm going to put it in the vlog so expect those two vlogs somewhere towards the end of february or when february is over the black author readathon i am so excited for this so many of my friends are hosting this readathon i'm going to list them all down below actually also for both of these readathons i'm not really following the prompts i'm hoping whatever books i pick fill into those prompts because there's just a bunch of books that I want to read that I specifically want to read and authors I specifically want to read and so hopefully the books that I have already picked fill those challenges in some way and hopefully I'll figure that out during the month whenever I read them. Also the parameters for the Black Author Readathon is like the main one obviously is that the book that you're reading is by a Black author. <laughs> so that's all the parameters I'm going by at this point. And again, hopefully those books fill in certain prompts as I read them. First one, Midian the Huntress by Talia Hibbert. Everyone loves this book that's read it. And this is a paranormal romance that Talia Hibbert has written. And I'm so excited. I love Talia Hibbert. A goal of mine this year is to read all of her backlist. People adore this book. And all I know it is that it is a werewolf shifter romance. The hero is a sh werewolf shifter. And then the heroine is a werewolf shifter hunter. So that's all I know about it. So I'm gonna know about it. I'm very excited for that though. Next, I want to read Mary Inkmas by Talia Hibbert. Yes, I'm going to be reading Christmas books in February. I don't care. Um, I'll read Christmas books all year long. I don't know a lot about this one. I know that Shelby from Shelby Taggart Reads, I believe is the one that I've heard about this book from because she loves this one. I'm pretty sure that's who I got the recommendation from. And I don't know anything about it except that it is a Talia Hibbert book that's about Christmas. And I, I don't know anything else about it. 
but again I love Charlie Hibbert so I don't feel like I need to look into the summary at all I'm just gonna read it next I definitely want to read a book by Stacy Reed I read my first Stacy Reed earlier in January and I loved it so I want to get into her other series and so a book that is on hold on Libby that hopefully I will get it in the month of February I'm crossing my fingers is Duchess by Day Mistress by Night by Stacey Reed the first book in the Rebellious Desires series this is a historical romance the hero's name is Reese spelled the same way that Sarah J Maas spells Reese y'all <laughs> Georgiana Rutherford, the Duchess of Hardcastle, seemingly has it all, wealth, pedigree, and the admiration of the ton, except her heart hungers for a passionate affair. She meets the enigmatic and ruthless Mr. Reese Tremaine, a man known to low and high society as the broker. The attraction between them is impossible to deny, but she cannot be feeling it for this man. Reese Tremaine has built his wealth and empire by dealing secrets in the black market of London underworld. He is determined to take his sisters away from the depraved world they've known their entire lives, and the Duchess is the perfect woman to help sponsor his sisters in society. The only problem is that he wants more from Georgiana, even if the social divide between them ensures she can only ever be his love lover in secret. So this is a uh, different classes romance. I'm very excited for this. <laughs> then I have A Princess in Theory by Alyssa Cole. I've had this one on many TBRs. <laughs> I've just never gotten to it. I don't know why. Um, I feel like maybe the whole secret keeping aspect may 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 get to me. I don't know. Um, so all I know about this one is that it is a royal romance where um, our heroine gets like or everybody kind of like gets these spam emails you know like um saying like oh you've inherited this amount of money oh you're a secret princess or oh this prince wants to marry you and she gets all these spam emails she gets one about a prince saying like oh you won a marriage to this prince or something like that and she it's obviously a scam she thinks until like an actual prince comes to get her and i feel like that's what it's about or something like that probably don't take my word for what this book is about i want to go in as blind as possible i've never read an Alyssa cole book i really want to read this series so i can finally get to the novella in this series that has a woman who is in a wheelchair and she falls asleep to a guy who like does puzzles or something or he does something i don't know she has to fall asleep to this man's voice and i want to read that one so bad but i want to read the series in order so i have to get to this first one first next i have set by alexandria house oh my gosh so many friends in my romance friend group have read this book quite a variety of opinion i feel like um some people hated it and some people loved it hopefully i like it um this i know is a novella um it says a chance encounter and one night of passion leads to a mutually beneficial arrangement for two souls from different worlds. When love creeps into the equation, neither is sure how to feel or what to do. The only thing either is certain of is the need for each other. So each book is a novella. There are a bunch of books in the series. Libby has all of them on audio for me. And so if I like this one, I can just go listen to all the other ones. And they're really short. So next I have Be My Spark by Nia Arthurs. Now I'm trying to utilize my Kindle Unlimited subscription more and so I saw one of the books in this series um, by Nia Authors I think on Instagram one day possibly and so I looked into this author and this series just looks amazing. Um, I picked book number five because the premise of that just seems more my jam than all the other ones that I've read about so far. I believe each of them are like a standalone romance and possibly some characters pop up here and there but book one just didn't really feel like something I would enjoy so I picked number five instead and this cover drew me in because it's beautiful. A superstar athlete, his former best friend, and an old grudge. Can the summer project be their chance to heal old wounds? Jonas Greer, they call him a basketball prodigy. To me he's nothing more than a cold-hearted jerk. Our friendship used to be my north star, my world, my everything. Now it's just a bitter reminder of how much he hurt me. Between hooking up with his adoring groupies every weekend, crushing hearts, jaws, and college basketball records, Jonas always finds the time to torment me. I clap back, refusing to cower, never expecting to be paired with him for an entire summer. But here we are, meeting in the back of the library, his hands brushing mine, his thighs pressed against my leg. They say there's a fine line between love and hate, and there is, but it's a line Jonas and I will never cross. Not with that awful secret simmering between us. Jonas thinks he can turn our spark of chemistry into a fire, but what he doesn't know, giving me that blaze will destroy me. That sounds so good. I am so excited for this. This is probably going to be the first 
book that I pick up. And lastly, for the Black Author Readathon, I have Sweet Talk and Lover by Tracy Lipsay. So I first heard about this book from uh, Steph from Steph's Romance Book Talk, who was one of the hosts for this readathon. I watched her recommendation video and I've seen her just gush over this series, so I definitely wanted to read it. Marketing manager Kalia Harris knows that the road to success in the beauty industry doesn't allow for detours. She's forsaken any trace of social life working 24 seven to ensure her next promotion. When grief over her grandfather's death leads to several catastrophic decisions, Kalia gets one final chance to prove herself, shut down an unprofitable factory in a small southern town, but as soon as she arrives in Bradleton, she meets one outsized problem, the town's gorgeous mayor. Wyatt Bradley isn't thrilled about his nickname, Mayor McCotty. He's even less happy to learn that his town might be losing its biggest employer. If he has to, he'll use some sneaky tactics to get Kalia on his side. Yet even as he's hoping she'll fall for Bradleton, he's falling too, right into the combustible affair that shakes them both with its intensity. I've heard great things about this series from Steph, so I definitely wanted to pick that one up. I am working with a bunch of other ladies to promote Pharaoh Feb, which is Fantasy Romance February, the Fantasy Romance Readathon, and it lasts the whole entire month where you read fantasy romance books. Again, just like the previous readathon, I just picked out a bunch of fantasy romance books that I wanted to read, and hopefully they fill in some of the prompts um, because I'm big, very big mood reader and these are the ones I am in the mood for. All but three of the books on this TBR are from one author. <laughs> Can we guess who? Can you guess who? First we have The Ippos King by Grace Draven. This is the third book in the Wraith King series, the first book being Radiance right over there. I am so excited for this. I have not read it yet. I don't know why it was released a couple months ago and I just haven't read it yet. Um, it's kind of like slipped my mind, which is crazy because I love this series so much. That's literally my favorite fantasy romance book or favorite romance book in general. So I definitely want to read this one. This is An Enemies to Lovers and um, that's all I know about it. I do not want to read the summary because I don't want to get spoiled. I want to go into this book as blind as possible because these two characters were in the two previous books. One, the man is a human-esque person and then the um, heroine in here is a Kai warrior woman. Like she's the leader of um, like the army in this land and she is amazing. I love her. <laughs> and so I can't wait to read this book. So both of these novellas are a part of the Master of Crows series. And I love Master of Crows by Grace Draven. And I love Master of Crows by Grace Draven. So these are two novellas a part of that world. The first one being The Lightning God's Wife. Um, I'm not gonna read the summary because it's a little itty bitty 25 page novella. So I definitely want to read this one so I can read all of Grace Draven's backlist. And so then number 1.3 in the series, it's a novella part of the Master of Crow series, is The Light Within, which is 15 pages. So my library had both of those, so I'm definitely going to read those in February. So the last Grace Draven that I want to read, hopefully, for this readathon is uh, The Undying King by Grace Draven. The stories are told in whispers, even after so long, of a man whose fair rule soured when he attained eternal youth. Imprisoned by a sorceress wife in a city out of time and place, he has passed into legend. Few believe him, and fewer would set their hopes on his mercy. But Imogen has no choice to break the curse that's isolated her since birth. She'll find the Undying King and answer his secrets with her own. That sounded so good to me. It's only 146 pages. I am here for it. I'm definitely reading this one. I need. I love Grace Draven so sticky much. I will hopefully love these. Next, I have Sworn to the Shadow God by Ruby Dixon. This is book number two, a part of the Aspect and Anchor series. I have loved this series so much. This is Ruby Dixon's, I believe, only fantasy romance series. I don't think she's written any other fantasy books because um, most of them are sci-fi or paranormal ones. The first one was a romance between a human woman who gets transported, like she's from Earth, gets transported to this fantasy land and falls in love with a god who is like, in his physical form. The first one was slow burn. It's like 600 something pages, slow burn. And so uh, I assume this one is gonna be slow burn too. This is gonna be my main audiobook for February, I feel like, because it is stinking long. Adventure, that's what my boring life was missing. So I fall through a portal into another world. I'm excited. Here I'm important, here I'm special. I find out just how special when I meet death. Yep, that guy. He's been exiled to the mortal realm to work through his flaws, and he's just as spoiled and awful as you'd think. Ragos, the Shadow Lord, is arrogant and rude and controlling and demands to get his way. He's selfish. He's impossible. He's also utterly gorgeous, magnetic, 
lonely, and strangely protective of me. Thanks to a magic bond, I now serve him as his anchor to the mortal realm. It means that I am his conscience, his guide, and the target for any assassin or glory seeker. After a few days of this, I'd rather go home to continue on this adventure. I need a way back to Earth, and fast. As the world falls down around us and we're hunted simply for existing, I find myself wondering what it'd be like to serve the lonely god of death in all ways. To kiss him, to touch him, to bed him. Except I'm supposed to be finding a way home, not trying to kiss Ragos, no matter how tempting he is, no matter how much he stares at my lips, no matter how much I want it. It's didn't know, I love Ruby Dixon. So, uh, I hope I get to this one. This one sounds so good. I really enjoyed the first one in the series, as well as the novella. If you didn't know, this novella, which was one of my favorites of 2020, is a novella part of that series. I read this one first out of all of it. Read this one first. This is only 100 something pages and the other books are 600 plus. Please read this first. It is amazing. So far it's my favorite out of all the books in that series. Then hopefully I can read uh, Bride of the Sea by Emma Hamm. This one just looks gorgeous. I love all of Emma Hamm's covers. She wrote Heart of the Fae which is a Beauty and the Beast retelling and this is another one in that series. The series all has different retellings. I've only read up to book two so this is book three and this is the Little Mermaid retelling and I really want to read a physical book this month and I think this one hopefully will be mine. Um, I, I'm not gonna read the back of it. I'm gonna go into this one blind. I really want to and this it just it looks so good and it's a Little Mermaid retelling and I haven't read a Little Mermaid retelling in so stinking long so I am very excited. I think it takes place in the same realm and world as um, Heart of the Fae so I'm very excited about that. This is the last book of part of the Pharaoh Feb, there you go, readathon um, that I plan on reading. I got this recommendation from TikTok. <laughs> I want to read more Kindle Unlimited books this year. This one is on Kindle Unlimited. I already have it downloaded. I am very excited. This one is called Rejected by Jamin Eve. This is the first book a part of the Shadow Beast Shifters series. I think this is fantasy romance. Um, it might be paranormal. Maybe. I don't know. We'll see when I read it. I still want to read this one in February. As a shifter wolf growing up in a strong pack, I should be living my best life. But after my father tried to kill the alpha, I'm labeled an outcast, traitor, less than dirt. When I can't take pack life any longer, I run. But apparently they don't like losing their punching bag. Torin, the alpha's son, drags me back before my first shift. A shift that will reveal my true mate. I never could have predicted who would be mine, but the moment my wolf looks upon him, I am filled with hope for a bright future. After all, no one rejects their true mate, right? Wrong. Very wrong. When the wolves attack, my soul screams for vengeance, and somehow I touch the shadow world. Somehow I bring him to our lands. The shadow beast, our shifter god, the devil himself, turns out being rejected by my mate was only the beginning. That sounds so good. So good. <laughs> I'm so excited for that. <laughs> So yeah, I got that recommendation off TikTok, so. <laughs> okay, I have two buddy reads that I have in February so far. <laughs> the first one being Love in the Wild by Emma Castle. I plan on buddy reading this with Aspasia over at Asparagus's Reading. I will link her down below. And the only thing that I know about this book that I plan on knowing about this book is that it is a Tarzan retelling that people have been loving. And so uh, Aspasia actually got me this book for Christmas, an ebook, this ebook for Christmas. And I love her so much for getting that book for me. And so uh, I really wanted to buddy read one of the books that she got me for Christmas. So she picked out this one and I'm so excited because I love Tarzan and like, like the new version with like, I believe with Alexander Skarsgård, I believe that's who plays Tarzan. I could just sit and just not even turn on the volume and just look look at that movie all day long <laughs> have you seen that man like <laughs> so uh i want to read this one there you go i'm gonna read this one with aspatia and i'm very excited next i'm buddy reading titanic by id johnson with nicole over at who picked this book so nicole saw that on bookstagram one day um i put out a story talking about how i want a titanic retelling like jack and rose literally on the titanic though like i want a titanic romance book and because I just watched rewatched Titanic and Titanic is one of my favorite movies of all time and I was like in my feels I was like I want a book like this I want a book of the Titanic I want a book like Jack and Rose like can we can someone find that for me and no one was like no but tell me when you find one and la 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 and then Nicole was even like I don't know but I will definitely let you know whenever I find one she finds one and it's a freebie on Amazon and I was like why don't we buddy read this I want to buddy read this with you and she's like yes let's do it so 
We're gonna buddy read this in February. Meg never dreamt she would find herself aboard Titanic, dressed in the borrowed clothes of her lady-in-waiting, hiding from her family, running from her haunting past. Now that she finally has the opportunity to escape it all, she realizes the man she has been engaged to for three years is also aboard the ship. Their marriage was arranged by their fathers long ago, and since they've always had the Atlantic Ocean between them, Meg is able to continue her charade. However, if Charlie discovers her true identity, she will end up breaking his heart all over again. And the more Meg spends time with Charlie, the more she realizes she made a terrible mistake. She never should have ran away from him to begin with. Will Meg find a way to reveal her true identity without destroying the blossoming relationship? Or will her last chance at true love end up in the abyss? I'm very excited to see how this plays into the Titanic shipwreck. I'm also excited to read this with Nicole. Next, I have two books a part of the Spindle Cove series. I'm not going to get into the summaries or anything because they're the next books in the series. Next I have Once Upon a Winter's Eve by Tessa Dare. This is a novella part of the Spindle Cove series and the Spindle Cove series is a historical romance series um, where Spindle Cove is like a little town where ladies come to be like recluses or become spinsters or to escape a troubled past and so each book is about one of those ladies uh, finding love and so this one is a novella part of that. And then book number three um, is A Lady by Midnight by Tessa Dare. Just another book a part of the Spindle Cove series that I'm very excited for. Then we have Shadows Seduction by Cressley Cole. I'm not gonna read the summary for this one either because I believe it is number 16? 16? 15? in the Immortals After Dark series which is a paranormal romance series dealing with faded mates and um, the lore and just like magical creatures and everything. I don't know what this one is about. I don't know the couples that are in it. But I definitely want to read this one and hopefully read also the last one in this month. But I'm not putting it on my TBR. I'm not going to force myself to because I don't, I have, I have too many books on this list anyway. <laughs> then I have Beautifully Beloved by Christina Lauren, which is book number 4.5, possibly. It's in the Beautiful Bastard series. It's a novella. Libby has it on audio for me. It's a very short read and I want to continue with the Beautiful Bastard series. Hopefully I can finish that series by the end of the year. So I wanted to read that one. And lastly, we have the only monthly February release on here that I am definitely going to be reading, which is A Court of Silver Flames by Sarah J. Mass, which could also be a part of the Fantasy Romance Readathon, but I am doing a dedicated reading blog for this book. You bet your bottom dollar I am. Y'all, I am so excited for this. This is the uh, continuation to the A Court of Thorns and Roses series, which is one of my favorite series of all time. I am so excited for this for the couple in here, I I am so excited. It comes out February 16th. Can't wait, can't wait, cannot wait. <laughs> so there you have it. Those are the very many <laughs> books that I have on my February TBR. I am not reading all of these, no flippin' way, um, but this is just the parameters that I've set for February or the uh, books that I can choose from in February that I will hopefully be getting to. I'll hopefully be getting to as many as possible. I read a lot a month so who knows maybe I actually will read all of these. Who knows? Let me know down below if you're going to be participating in any of these uh, readathons, both of the readathons. I'd love to know and if you have a TBR video out please let me know so I can watch it. Also let me know if you've read any of these books or if you plan to. But anyways thank you all so so much for watching. I will see y'all soon in my next one. Bye y'all. Mm -hmm.